again. All right, so uh, we are going to continue with pregnancy. So hopefully by now you have learned all about male and female reproduction and you've learned about the anatomy and the physiology, uh, how to make sperm, how to make uh, oocytes. And so now we're ready to put these together and uh, form the baby, okay? So, all right, so. Ooh, where'd I go? All right, so uh, the pregnancy talk is going to be divided into several. We're going to do the fertilization, and then we're going to talk about when the uh, embryo actually implants into the uterus. We're going to have development of, of the uh, uh, embryo into um, a fetus and then, um, and then a baby, or then it's going to be born as, a, as, a, as an infant. So we've got several videos to cover this whole process. Um, and so I want to take just a second because a lot of times we use some terms and in the lay terms we use a lot of things interchangeably, uh, but there are actually some words that have some specific meanings and one of those is pregnancy and gestation, okay? So a lot of times we say uh, pregnancy, uh, but we may mean gestation, so they're, they, they're a little bit different. So pregnancy is from fertilization, okay? The events from fertilization until the infant is born. That's not quite the same thing as gestation. Gestation is from the time of the last menstrual period until birth. That's about 280 days. So um, one of the, that's one of the things the doctors will ask you, when was the first day of your last period? Because they're trying to figure out your gestation period. Uh, and that's going to give them a ac more accurate uh, uh, calculation of how far along you are in the pregnancy. Okay, so gestation is from the time of the last menstrual period to birth and pregnancy is from fertilization until birth. And you don't necessarily know when you, when uh, fertilization occurred, but you should know when your last period was, okay? Um, so some other words are conceptus, embryo, and fetus. And so here's fertilization, okay? And uh, the conceptus is just the developing offspring, okay? So uh, once, it's, uh, once you have fertilization occur, we now have a conceptus. Um, the embryo is the conceptus, because remember, conceptus is just what it's called as it's developing. The embryo is the conceptus from fertilization through week eight. All right, so here we have our, our, um, our embryo. Now once we get to week nine, so conceptus to week nine through birth, we call it a fetus. All right, so you have fertilization, you form this conceptus, which is an embryo up until the week, week eight. From week nine to birth, we call it a fetus. And so um, we wanna make sure we think about what's an embryo, what's a fetus, and then once it's born, we can use the word infant, okay? So what is fertilization? Well, fertilization is when the sper sperm's chromosomes and the chromosomes from the secondary oocyte form, come together, okay? So fertilization occurs when the sperm's chromosomes combine with the chromosomes of the secondary oocyte. So remember, that ovulated um, egg that we've been talking about it's not finished with meiosis yet. Remember, it's kind of in a suspended state, so it's going to have to finish meiosis too before it actually is kind of done through the process, before it's done with its process of oogenesis, okay? Uh, it's a very small window of opportunity for fertilization to actually occur. The oocyte um, is viable once it's ovulated for about 12 to 24 hours, okay? So it, it's kind of, it can live for about half a day to a day. The sperm, is viable for 24 to 48 hours, all right? So that's why if you have ovulation on day 14, hopefully you talked about that, because sperm can live up to two days, you start having intercourse at day 12, so the sperm have two days to, to get to the egg, uh, and then uh, up to 16, because again, once you ovulate, that egg uh, can live another 24 hours, so on day 15, uh, you, may, you may have fertilization. So you wanna give yourself as many chances as possible if you're trying to get pregnant. So for fertilization to occur, intercourse or coitus needs to occur no more than two days before and 24 hours after ovulation. So that window of about, about day 12 to 16 is a good time for pregnancy to possibly occur. So let's just um, rehash uh, out the um, anatomy that's going on here. Um, this is from a different textbook that I had, that I had borrowed, um, so if you don't find this one in your book, that's why it's from a McGraw-Hill book. Um, what I want you to notice is um, just ha as we go through this particular A&P course, we like to trace paths. We like to say, okay, where's blood going? We trace our path of blood. 
We're going to trace um, food through the digestive system. We're going to trace how your blood flows to the kidney and forms urine, and urine travels through the urinary system. So we want to be able to, uh, to track uh, the path of sperm and the oocyte. So think about this as an exam question. All the structures that a sperm would have to pass through on its way to fertilization, and the same thing for the oocyte. Where is it coming from, and where is it going to meet the sperm? All right, so this arrow here, this is the path of the sperm. So the sperm, and think about this from the very beginning. If this was an essay question and I asked you to trace the um, path of sperm, if I said from ejaculation, you have to go all the way back to the, the testis and the epididymis and through the, the vas deferens and past the seminal vesicles. You're like, oh, no, through the prostate, through the urethra, <laughs> through the urethral opening, through the vaginal opening into the vagina, through the cervix, through the uterus, Okay, so you see how that's working? So make sure you're going back and thinking about this whole uh, process. Um, the sperm, once they get into the cervix, or past the cervix into the uterus, they can go either to this side or this side. They're going to go to both sides. And they're going to go into these uh, uterine tubes, also called fallopian tubes. Uh, and the egg is going to be ovulated and hopefully caught by these little fimbriae, uh, at the uh, by the of the uterine tube and be swept into the uterine tube and hopefully they're going to meet about right there okay so they're going to kind of meet in that uh, distal portion of the uterine tube that's where fertilization typically occurs and then this fertilized um, um, conceptus will then travel down the uterine tube back to the uterus and implant inside the uterus so again think about all those structures I know you know that the sperm has to pass through and the and how the egg uh, passes from the ov ovary to the uterine tube and then once they're joined where they go from there so these are kind of pathway questions um, one thing I wanted to mention if you haven't had your um, you haven't done your lab yet your uterine lab and your female lab when you look at the vagina uh, there's two little what called blind pouches uh, it's called the fornices and so sp some sperm don't quite make it through the cervical openings so through the cervix and they get lost in the fornix, okay? So you're going to lose a lot here. Not all of them will make it through the cervix into the uterus, okay? So during intercourse, semen are going to be deposited into the vagina, not the cervix and uterus. They've got to swim through the cervix into the uterus. So that leads me to why does it take so many sperm? I mean, uh, men make millions, and during an ejaculation, millions of sperm are ejaculated. Uh, well, one thing is just gravity. So millions are going to leak right out of the vagina. They just come falling right back out. Because remember, uh, there's going to be a coagulase to kind of thicken it up, but Im immediately that doesn't happen. So many of them just uh, leak back out. The female vagina is very acidic, uh, which is going to be very destructive. So think back to what's in semen. You've got those, those alkaline um, um, substances to help neutralize the acidity of the vagina, but uh, some sperm are going to get killed by that. Uh, again, some are not even going to make it to the cervix. They're going to get stuck in those fornices or just not even going to make it uh, through the cervical opening. Uh, the female has an immune system, so she's got white blood cells, uh, leukocytes, uh, that are going to uh, eat those sperm and get rid of them. All right? And then again, they're going to go in the wrong direction. Half are going to go uh, one way and half are going to go the other. So you know, half the sperm don't even have a chance because they went the wrong way. So it takes a lot of sperm, all right, to hopefully get one to that oocyte. Plus, we're going to talk about it takes more than one sperm to actually crack the egg, okay? All right. Another thing about these sperm, they're not quite done yet when they're during ejaculation. They've got to learn how to swim. They've got to become modal, all right? So that's, they're not swimming inside the, the testes. They don't swim until they're actually... Uh, have gone through um, ejaculation and all the, the substances in semen are going to be released and causes the motility increase to be increased. Um, they also have to be capacitated before they can penetrate the oocyte. So they've got to be turned on. So there's going to be motility increased. Um, you're going to have these, um, so remember the sperm looks like this. So you're going to increase the motility so it can swim. There's membranes uh, around the sperm that need to be broken down so that we can then release the DNA. So we're going to kind of start weakening that sperm head so that now the DNA can actually um, get into the egg and we can release our enzymes that we're going to need to be released. And we'll, I'll show you this in just a second. So we have to capacitate it. We have to kind of um, turn it on. Um, part of this is from the semen and part of it is from secretions of the female tract. 
uh, the female actually helps weaken the uh, chromosome, that little cap on the top. So both the male and the female um, secretions play a role in uh, getting the sperm ready for its final job of penetration of the egg. Um, and there is some um, thought, um, how does sperm find the egg? Uh, there is some research that's kind of saying that maybe they have some, some type of rudimentary olfactory receptors and that there may be an olfactory trail. And so they're kind of sniffing out, trying to find that oocyte. More information, uh, you know, hopefully in the future as they study that, but that's um, one theory or one idea. I'll say not theory, I'll say hypothesis um, out there about um, how the sperm find the egg. Um, so once the sperm gets to the egg, uh, to the oocyte, it's got to kind of, what I say, crack the egg. Because remember, that oocyte is, is surrounded by a corona radiata and a zona pellucida. All right, and so that sperm has got to get through those, those layers. Uh, so the sperm is going to kind of weave its way through this corona radiata, and it's going to bind to the zona pellucida, and that's where the chromosome does its thing. And I'm going to show you a picture and show you all these steps. Um, and once you have this chromosomal reaction, a chromosomal, yeah, a chromosomal, I think I said that right, reaction, um, you're going to release enzymes. And these enzymes are used to break down that zone of pellucida, that clear zone. So you're going to be able to crack that egg. And it takes hundreds and hundreds of sperm releasing those enzymes to actually digest the zone of pellucida enough so that a sperm can get through. All right. There's several cool videos on YouTube uh, out there that shows this. I'll try to find one and post it um, in your course so you can kind of see an animation of that. So this is a step-by-step -step process. And so we're really just showing the journey of one sperm uh, going through this process. But there's going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sperm all around this egg. And they're all doing this at the same time. So you have your sperm weaving through the granulosa cells. Okay, so we're weaving through those granulosa cells. They're binding to the zone of pellucida, so let's, let's find our little thing. We're binding to the zone of pellucida right here. And this causes a rise in calcium levels in the sperm. And that will trigger the release of those chromosomal enzymes. All right, so it binds the zone of pellucida, you get a calcium spike, and you release your enzymes. These enzymes, this little red, looks like red, starts to digest away that zone of pellucida. So you're punching a hole into the, um, into these um, zone of pellucida, into the, in, you're punching a hole through the zone of pellucida so that you can get to, um, to the oocyte membrane. Once it's punched through that zone of pellucida, there's actually receptors, little sperm receptors on the egg. So all the sperm are doing this and all these enzymes are breaking down that, um, that uh, membrane until finally one of them makes it through and binds the actual receptor. Now only one can do this. So the sperm and the oocyte are going to fuse. Once that sperm binds that receptor, the sperm and oocyte membranes come together and they fuse together and the sperm can then enter into the oocyte. All right, so only, only one gets to do this. So once the sperm enters in, you get another rise in calcium level in the oocyte. So the sperm once it um, binds and enters in, when it dumps its contents into the um, oocyte, that causes an, another calcium event. And when this happens, this calcium event in the oocyte causes something called a cortical reaction. And what it does is it hardens that zone of pellucida. It kind of makes it hard again, so now nobody else can get through. So you have a hardening of the zone of pellucida. It's like you've reformed the shell. All right? And that will clip off the sperm, okay? And nobody else can get through it. Kind of, it blocks those receptors, so no more sperm can get in and bind those receptors. And this prevents something called polysperm. You don't want multiple sperm getting into the oocyte because then you have too much DNA. Remember, we want to take the 23 from mom, the 23 from dad, put those together, and get 46 chromosomes. Well, if you had 23 from this sperm and 23 from another sperm, and another sperm got in, how many is that? That's a lot. That's 60 something, 70 something sperm. That's too many. It won't work. You only want one sperm to get in there. So you're going to have this really nice pathway for the sperm to go in, bind their receptor, which allows one sperm to go in, and now we're approaching fertilization. This isn't technically fertilization yet. Okay? So once the sperm penetrates that secondary oocyte, remember the oocyte's been kind of suspended. It it's, hasn't finished meiosis two. Now the oocyte will complete meiosis two. It's going to form the ovum, 
okay, which is what the sperm and the ovum are what have to come together. That's what's going to actually form the conceptus and form the embryo. So now you have the ovum and a second polar body. Remember how a sperm makes four sperm? Remember that? And in oogenesis, you have that. Uh, you get one ovum, and then you get those three little polar bodies. So you get your second polar body. Now you have the, you're now set up for actual fertilization to occur. The sperm and the ovum, the nuclei, are going to swell, and they're going to form what are called pronuclei, and they're going to start to migrate toward each other. Okay, so think about this as a nice romantic movie where here comes the guy and the girl, and they're running toward each other. So they're going to approach each other, and they're going to fuse, and their chromosomes are going to mix. So when the fusion of this male and female um, sperm and ovum um, pronuclei um, fuse together, that's fertilization. Fertilization is accomplished when you have the mixing of the DNA from the mother and the father. And now we have an official zygote. Okay, so that's fertilization. All right, so uh, I'm going to stop there. Uh, so we've accomplished uh, fertilization, and then the next steps uh, we'll um, move through what happens as uh, fertilization, um, post fertilization. We've got to have this one cell divide, 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 and make many, 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 many cells that will become brains and spinal cords and arms and legs and, and all the good stuff that we think of as being a human. So um, we've got to start doing mitosis. These cells have got to start dividing, becoming mitotically active, and making more and more cells. So we'll get to that in the next video, and I will see you then. Thank you again.